Hello and welcome to Baiju's IS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following statements is are correct? National Highways Authority of India is an extra constitutional body. NH1 extends from Delhi to Amritsar. NH7 is the longest national highway in India. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference to the National Highways Authority of India in the PIB article. Now, when we look into the options, the first option is correct. Why? Because the National Highways Authority of India happens to be a statutory body. So, anything which is statutory in nature is an extra constitutional body. What is the extra constitutional body? Anything which is not mentioned in the constitution is an extra constitutional body. Is the National Highways Authority of India mentioned in constitution? No. But when we speak about UPSC or the Election Commission of India, they are mentioned under the constitution. So it becomes the constitutional body. But a statutory body which is not part of the constitution will go on to become an extra constitutional body. Now when you look into the second statement, it says NH1 extends from Delhi to Amritsar. This was correct according to the earlier analogy. But this naming convention has been changed. So NH1 now does not extend from Delhi to Amritsar, but instead it extends between the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. So kindly remember, when you are referring to the NCRTs, it may show that NH1 extends from Delhi to Amritsar. This convention has been changed. Now it is up Updated. And what we have is that NH1 extends between the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. NH1 thus passes from Uri to Baramulla, Srinagar, Sonarmag, Zojila, Dras, Kargil as well as Leh. Remember this change that has been done with respect to the naming convention. Now when we look into the third statement, NH7 is the longest national highway. This was once again correct according to the earlier convention. But now it has been changed as well. Now the longest national way in India happens to be National Highway Number 44. Do remember these changes because it can be important from your preliminary examination. Now when we look into the National Highways Authority of India was formed under NHAI Act in 1988. This has entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Indian Space Research Organization and the Northeast Centre for Technology, Application and Research. What does it do? It manages the complete network of national highways in the country. So the overall responsibility of maintaining and keeping a check in the developmental prospects of the road is maintained by this National Highways Authority of India. It is under the administrative control of the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to National Investigation Agency, which of the following statements is are correct? The agency is allowed to investigate offences committed outside India. NIA can investigate terror cases across the country without having to get permission from the states. Which of the statements here are correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference in this article. Now when we look into the option, the first option says the agency is allowed to investigate offences committed outside India. What you have to remember is that this particular national investigation agency was established immediately after the Mumbai terror attack. What was the intention of it? The intention of it was to bring an end to the terrorist activities and after a terrorist activity is conducted to understand what has been the root cause of the failure. That is what is the intention of this establishment and to find out evidences and to prove who has committed that particular crime. This was an agency which was established under the concurrent list. Since it was established under the concurrent list, it needs did not have to take the permission from the states whenever it is investigating one of the terrorist activities. Meanwhile, when you look into the first statement, it goes on to say that the agency is allowed to investigate offences committed outside India. 
when you look into the original act what we had that was established in 2008 it said all the offenses all the terrorist activities that was present and occurred in india will be investigated by this agency only within india but in the year 2019 we have had a major amendment as well according to this amendment what we have is that this agency would be able to investigate offenses which are committed outside the country only thing that we require is an understanding with another country so subject to the international treaties and domestic laws indian agency would be able to investigate so the first statement is right the second statement is right so the answer to this would be both now let's look into the amendments that were introduced in the year 2019 when you look into the original amendment that is you had a schedule under this particular schedule all the offenses that were committed in reference to the atomic energy act unlawful activities act of 1967 or anti hijacking act were to be investigated by the nia but what has happened with the amendment with the amendment human trafficking counterfeit currency or bank notes related offense sale and manufacture of prohibited arms offenses under the explosive substances act and cyber terrorism also comes into picture so the earlier domain was restricted but now what we have is an extinction and addition of few other domains earlier when you look into this particular nia if there is a particular person who's committed an act who happens to be a person who is accused of that particular crime what we had was a special court to investigate and conduct the trial this was already explicitly mentioned but in the present situation according to the amended act the central government also has the provision to designate sessions court as the special court kindly remember the nia functions under the ministry of home affairs it is headed by a director general it is headquartered in new delhi now let's look into the next practice question which one among the following statements is incorrect with respect to international solar alliance the international solar alliance is a coalition of solar resource rich countries that lie either completely or partly between the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn it is the first full fledged treaty based international intergovernmental organization headquartered in india the isa membership is limited to countries which are partially or fully located within the the tropics the body is funded by voluntary contributions by its members and partner countries which of the statements given here is incorrect with respect to the international solar alliance so the answer to this would be c when you look into the statement the isa membership is limited to countries partially or fully located within the tropics this is a wrong statement why when you look into this statement this has been changed according to the amendments introduced to the international solar alliance the original intent of solar alliance was restricted only to those members whose country fall between the tropics or it partially falls within the tropical region so we have the tropic of cancer we also have the tropic of capricorn so any country which partially falls or fully falls within the tropic of cancer or within the tropic of capricorn only only were part of the membership but this was changed now any country which is a member of united nations can become the member of the international solar alliance so basically what does this alliance do this will exploit if fossil fuels can be cut down and increasing the exploitation of the solar energy is what is the intent of this international solar alliance basically to bring this into implementation what we require is the coordination so the coordination between the countries bilateral and multilateral organizations industry bodies and multiple stakeholders come on a common platform and they discuss how they have to exploit the solar energy so this is one of the intergovernmental organization yes this happens to be the first one which is headquartered in india so the assignment for you for today is that you have to put on the comment section where is this headquarters located in india why have we taken this practice question because of the reference given in this article with reference to coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure which of the following statements is or correct cdri was launched by the president of european commission at the un climate action summit cdri secretariat is based in madrid a large share of the estimated fund requirements 
to cover the core cost for the first five years was invested by Germany and France. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is none. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference in the same article. Now, when we look into this practice question, the CDRI was not launched by the President of European Commission, but instead it was launched by the Prime Minister of India at the UN Climate Action Summit in the year 2019. So, the first statement is wrong. The CDRI Secretariat is not based in Madrid, but instead it is in New Delhi. So, the second statement is wrong once again. And when you look into the third statement, a large section of the estimated fund for the first five years is not invested by Germany and France, but instead it will be invested by India. Since all the three statements given here are incorrect, which is why the answer to this would be none. Now, let's look into the next practice question. What does venture capital mean? A short term capital provided to industries, a long term startup capital provided to new entrepreneurs, funds provided to industries at times of incurring losses, funds provided for replacement and renovation of industries. Which of the statements correctly link to the venture capital? The answer to this is a long term startup capital provided to the new entrepreneurs. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2014. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is antibody dependent enhancement. What is this antibody dependent enhancement? This is also called as immune enhancement or disease enhancement. What exactly happens? In our human body, we have something called as immunity. It is this immunity which is able to fight any of the foreign pathogen and when it comes to immunity, what we have is one of the fighting protein called as the antibody. So, what is this antibody? It is what prevents or fights against any of the incoming pathogens. The pathogens can be in the form of bacteria and it can also be in the form of viruses as well. Let's say we have to neutralize the virus. What do we do? We come up with the vaccines. So, the vaccines are the ones which are able to fight the menace of the viruses. But these vaccines, when they are created, they are the ones which are created artificially. It is not the natural antibody, but sometimes what exactly happens? Vaccines, which are supposed to neutralize a particular pathogen, will create antibodies in such a way that they itself becomes a variant, which is where instead of neutralizing the virus, it also becomes a variant in itself and starts becoming an enhancer of the disease. So ideally, what this vaccine should have done, it should have developed an antibody. This antibody should have neutralized that particular virus. But in few cases, in exceptional cases, the vaccine creates the antibody which aids in the development of a variant, which ultimately means it enhances the disease. This antibody dependent enhancement is nothing but the antibody which should have stopped a particular disease or the spread of the pathogen or should have neutralized the pathogen pathogen instead goes about supporting that particular pathogen the variant of that particular pathogen in fact enhances that particular disease is what is this antibody dependent enhancement apart from this the article goes on to say that there are many people who are showcasing vaccine hesitancy and they are not getting administered with the vaccine so an awareness program will also have to be created in reference to such people says this article. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. This is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.